Blue Sax players, Mr. Mar here. Hope everybody's doing well. This video is going to go over some of the very basics about playing a saxophone as it relates to alto saxophone. Uh, there'll be a tenor saxophone one as well that you can use uh, if you're playing tenor this year. I'm going to go over just a bunch of very basic things to help you get reacclimated to playing a saxophone in case you haven't played for some time over the summer or when we were remote. So hopefully this stuff helps you out. Uh, so first tip, when you put your saxophone together, you're going to want to attach your mouthpiece to the neck first, right, before you put your reed on or anything like that. So a lot of times like people will put their reed on, get everything straight, then when they put it on the neck, they just end up ripping everything off when they twist. So you save that by putting the mouthpiece on the neck first. Once you have that and your reed is wet, you, you know, you soaked in your mouth for about 20 seconds or so, Right. The first thing you're going to do is put your ligature on, nice and loose on the saxophone. All right. Then you're going to take the reed and you're going to fit it in between the ligature and the mouthpiece. All right. So what you can do is you use your two fingers here, your thumb and your first finger, and you can move the reed left and right with that. And then your thumb on the bottom right here can move the reed up and down. So you kind of find the spot that you're looking for. Remember the ligature is already on there. So when you find the spot, let the ligature come down, tighten it however your ligature functions to tighten, and your reed should look something like this. So if you see here, there's just a little bit of black from the mouthpiece visible when you look at it straight on, and the reed's just, just a little under. All right, so a few things that you may not have realized is where the reed is placed is incredibly important. The higher the reed is, typically the more resistance you have. And the lower the reed is, the less resistance you have. So I've moved this reed up a little bit. So if it was here, it would have a little more resistance or even actually a pretty great deal more resistance. And if I moved it lower, right? So you could see here, it's lower from the spot I showed you. There would be less resistance there. Now you can move the reed up so high and so low that it won't make a sound. But for the most part, the higher it is, the more resistance you have, and the lower it is, the less. And where that reed goes really depends on you. Now, where I put it at the beginning, just to show you, you know, that's like your general spot. So that may work for you. I would suggest trying that first. And then if it doesn't, you feel like, oh, it's just so easy to play. Move the reed up a little bit. Or if it's too hard to play, you know, move the reed down a little bit you know that reed placement you'll notice like i mean i was holding it up here showing you you may not even notice a difference it's really really minuscule really really minute the amount of space that makes a great deal of change so experiment find where it's supposed to be also you know what kind of reed you have or just like reeds are like the most consistent thing in the world. I mean, just depending on the reed, you may have to move it, but having it there and making sure you're putting it on right. The reason we do the ligature first and the reed second is because tons of kids smack their tip of the reed when they put the ligature on if they do it second. So that'll save you some time there. All right, we're gonna move on to uh, how to sit and play right up next. The way you sit and the way you have your sacks kind of lined up and set are both incredibly important for getting out a good sound or just being comfortable when you play. So you notice the saxophone has a curved neck, right? That's because your mouthpiece is meant to go straight into your mouth. That's why it's curved that way. So that when I'm playing, it's going straight in. So you don't want your saxophone to be bent down like this, all right, or like too high so it's like taking your head off. Right? You want to find the exact spot so that it goes straight in. So you shouldn't have to search for your saxophone. So if my neck strap's too low, like a lot of yours, right, and I go to put it in my mouth, I hit my chin, then I have to like duck down to catch it. You shouldn't do that. You should be sitting up straight, sax to your right side, and then the neck strap should be at a spot so that, boom, the saxophone goes in the mouth straight. The other thing that helps is your right arm should be as close to an L as you can make it. So it should be pushing the saxophone out. Right? You don't want your arm to ever, your elbow should never be behind your body because that forces that downward motion. You want it like an L so that saxophone mouthpiece goes straight into your mouth. That's how you end up getting the best sound. When you're playing alto, you should have the saxophone down to the right side of your body unless you are like a giant. Right? So for me, I could put it in the center of my body because I'm a big dude. 
right? So it's easy for me. But most of you, you're going to need to put it to the side of your body. Your arms shouldn't touch any part of your body. It shouldn't rest on your leg when you play or anything like that. You shouldn't need to put it on the arm carrier chair. You should be able to just pull the sacks out, let the neck strap do the work of bearing most of the weight, and you should be able to play. That's pretty much how you're going to want to have everything lined up when you play the saxophone. Think about that L shape and think about making it go directly into your mouth on the right side of your body. In order to produce a good sound on the saxophone, you have to have the right embouchure. So your embouchure is the shape and the way your muscles are working on your face. So the way you, you know, use your lips and the muscles up here to support uh, the air and putting pressure on the reed. So there's a certain way you do it on saxophone. As I said before, the saxophone mouthpiece goes directly into your mouth, straight on. You're going to take a little bit of your bottom lip and cover a little, and cover your bottom teeth. Not a whole big chunk, just a little bit. Your top teeth are going to go directly on top of the mouthpiece. And you're going to take the corners of your mouth, and you're going to smile. You pull them up like that, and you do all this. Put your saxophone in your mouth. There's a smile. Right? And you get those corners up, and that's what puts the uh, the pressure on the reed to help you uh, support your sound. You don't need to take a whole bunch of mouthpiece, and you also don't want to take too little. And where the amount of mouthpiece you take into your mouth, it depends on you. You'll know if you take too much mouthpiece. You just sound like like a like a goose or a duck. Your sax like just quacks when you have too much mouthpiece in your mouth, and when you don't have enough. You either barely get a sound or you don't get a sound out at all. And it takes some time, you know, to figure out where that spot is for you. But once you find it and you have like very, you know, it's comfortable for you, you usually can find it again quickly because you just know how it feels. So I have my top teeth on my mouth. So your, you should be able to move your lower jaw. So the pressure from the coming from your right arm on the bottom of your saxophone is against your top teeth, against your top teeth. That means I can talk, my lower jaw can move. That's how you breathe on the saxophone. So when you take a breath on the saxophone, you drop your lower jaw, just like that. That's how you take in air. You don't like, <clears throat> and like try, it looks like you're gonna take a bite out of your saxophone. You, you don't have to do any of that. You don't have to use the corners of your mouth. So you just drop, your lower jaw. If you're holding your saxophone right and it's going in your mouth straight, the pressure should be on, more on your top teeth, not dropping down on your bottom jaw or your bottom teeth. Then you just you can't really drop your lower jaw. So you keep it pushed up against your top teeth. You need to sit up straight. Make sure your sax is to the sides. You want to make sure no part of your arms are touching any part of the rest of your body. It shouldn't be in like this. It shouldn't be you know on your legs. If you have a chair with an armrest like this chair, it's not usually best to play with it. That's why I have this kind of tilted. You don't want to end up like lying back, resting. You want to be sitting up straight so your air can just go through your body and into your saxophone. So we are going to play a B and just hold it out for four beats. So remember, you're going to have the bottom lip covered, smile, top teeth, and the mouth piece, saxophone pressure up. Let's just sound like this. Try that with me, see if you can emulate that sound. Two, three, four. All right, and just try to remember all of those things. I know it's a lot. Watch the video again if you miss any of it. Try to keep your arm in the L shape, sack straight in, bottom lip on the bottom teeth, top teeth on the top of the mouthpiece, and drop your lower jaw to breathe and smile. That's the basics of getting a good sound out on the saxophone. notes on the saxophone is you do something called tonguing. So when you tongue on a saxophone, you're getting your tongue is going to get in the way of the air and it just it interrupts it and that's what allows you to hear separate notes. So it sounds like this if I were to try and go using my tongue to separate the notes allows me to enunciate. So if you're making a musical statement or a musical phrase, you need to enunciate and separate the syllables and parts of the phrase. Use your tongue to do that. Just like if I was talking to you, 
I would use one breath to make a statement. I would say, hey, how are you doing today? And I would use one breath. My air is always moving, but my mouth, my lips, my tongue, it's, it, it, it gets in the way and changes the syllables and separates the sounds. Same thing on saxophone, so it's a lot simpler. You just use your tongue. And what you do when you tongue is you're going to think of the word two. So when I say the word two, 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 that my tongue has that percussive hit, right? And that tongue, your tongue is going to try to tap right underneath the tip of the reed, right underneath it, not on the tip. You want to avoid hitting the tip of the reed with your tongue. If it's a little off, it just, you get a splinter sometimes. It's just not pretty. You want to hit right below the tip of the reed and get used to it. And you do it by thinking of the word two. And when you say the word two, you should notice two, 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 your jaw doesn't move. You don't want your bottom jaw to move every time you talk. Then you get this like very wah thing, da la la like that. You want to keep everything in one spot. So you may, when you're when you play in elementary school or even some in middle school, you may have gotten used to using separate puffs of air to separate your notes. You want to get out of that habit and only use your tongue. So if I had to play four quarter notes and I use my tongue, it's like this. And you can hear they're very connected, right? But if I was using separate puffs of air, like that, it's not really as pleasant of a sound. So you want to make sure you're tonguing whenever you can on the sound. And one way you can get used to doing that is by holding out a note for four beats and then tonguing it four times on quarter notes. So I take a listen. I'll hold a B out for four beats and then I'll tongue four Bs on quarter notes. Just like that. So by doing that, you're getting used to keeping your air moving and not stopping it and reusing and reattacking with air every time you play. So you hold the note up for four beats, the air moves. And when you start to separate the notes and tongue them, your air does the same exact thing. It never stops. Your tongue just flicks up there and gets in the way of it on those beats, and that's how you separate the notes and tongue. So we're going to try that exercise. I'm going to count off. We're going to play it on B natural, first fingers. You're going to hold a B out for four beats, and then you're going to tongue four beats. And remember, when you tongue those Bs, you want to keep the air moving. Don't stop the air. Just keep blowing putting that pressure through and letting your tongue interrupt it. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Just like that. Now you can slow that up. You can do it on different notes all throughout until you get used to really tongue. But just remember, you keep the air the same. Whether it's whole note or tongue notes, the air is always moving. And that's really... Uh, the secret a lot of people miss when it comes to tonguing. You have to just keep that air moving. Guys, we're going to do, just incorporate some of the stuff I talked about in the video earlier, is we're just going to play a G major scale on the alto sax. And when you go up the scale, we're going to slur all the notes. And when you come down the scale, we're going to tongue all of the notes. So it'll sound like this. <laughs> So we're not repeating the G at the top. We're going up, and on our way down, when we hit the F sharp coming down, you're going to tongue each note. So your G scale has got G, which is you know three fingers, then A, which is two fingers, B natural, one finger, C, your middle finger, D is all six fingers and your thumb on the octave key, E, you lift up your bottom D key here, so you only have two in the right hand, F sharp, middle finger in the right hand, and G up top, same thing with low G, so with the octave key. Uh, the notes should be on the bottom of the screen if you uh, need to follow along the note name. So when we go up, we slur. When we come down, we're going to tongue. Remember the other stuff in this video. Saxophone to the side, L-shaped with your arm, straightening your mouth, bottom lip over your bottom teeth, top teeth down and the pressure's up here, corners like you're swallowing, and when you read, you drop that lower jaw. So here's your tempo right here. Ready, one, so slur on the way up, tongue on the way down.
One, two, ready, go. <laughs> breath even better all right guys that's the basics on the saxophone hope you got something out of this video and i'll see you in the next one take care